It's lively at the morgue tonight. Doc Robbins has the body of a homeless man, which unfortunately is a routine occurrence. But this Vic has some interesting anomalies. Brass can get you the address of where the body was found. But first start with our best evidence, the body itself. Hey, I'm Warwick Brown. We can use another good CSI. Catherine says you don't miss much. How about this time you don't miss anything? So let's go see the doc and find out what put this homeless corpse on the coroner's radar. Warwick and the newbie, welcome to the morgue. Very helpful destination, unless it's your last. And I hope you aren't squeamish, because the body of evidence on any murder case starts with the body as evidence. I'm Dr. Albert Robbins, but we're gonna be friends, so Doc or Al is fine. I'm here to answer your questions, uncover little pieces of truth that will add up to a bigger truth. How our Vic died, what the murder weapon was, possibly the deceased's identity. I deal with the kind of trace evidence that doesn't make itself obvious at the crime scene. So what's the story here, Doc? Grissom said you found something that didn't quite add up on a homeless guy. First glance, we've got a male mid-30s apparent alcohol poisoning fatality. Of course, we have bleeding out of the mouth consistent with this kind of death and the expected filthy, ragged and ill-fitting clothing. Not exactly the top story in the 11 o'clock news, right? But consider the stomach contents, traces of white French truffles, which go around $150 an ounce, Plus, we have a blood alcohol reading of 0. 0.50. High, you say? Too high. The hardest core drinker would typically pass out long before hitting that mark. Well, that's a start. I've prepped a DNA sample for the computer as a matter of procedure. Normally pretty straightforward, but not in this case. The entire body should be rigid from rigor mortis. That's muscle losing its adenosine triphosphate and hardening. But the stiffness was inconsistent, absent in several joints indicating that the Vic was moved. And without knowing the environmental conditions at the real site of the death, determining time of death becomes quite difficult. Wakeman Vodka. Pretty high-class brand for a homeless guy, don't you think? Sure, but here's another surprise for you. I found indications our fragrant vagrant may have been dressed posthumously. You'll also note that we have an oddly well-groomed corpse beneath the rags. Well-groomed, but you've still got the malnutrition and poorly healed wounds, consistent with the life on the streets. Some post-mortem bruising on the face, too. He had a heart transplant, probably as an adolescent. So this is not a man who always lived his life on the streets. No evidence of any anti-rejection drugs in his system. Though off his meds, he may have been living on borrowed time anyway. Bruises indicate he may have been forcefully held down, not a post-mortem injury. If you don't tell Grissom, I'll share a guess with you. The nose test says that's your standard issue garden variety vomit. Involuntary contractions cause the stomach to spew its contents up the esophagus. Lots of ways that, that reflex can be triggered. From a finger down the throat, to flu, to feelings of guilt. Impression and tan line on his finger suggests he'd worn a ring for some time, months at least. Hmm, no fatty deposits on the liver, smooth tissue, nutmeg color too. Street person or not, this was no heavy drinker. Yeah? What do you need, guys? Hey, you're gonna love this. How about a condemned building that was once an insane asylum near the edge of town? Real eyesore. 
Drives us crazy. All the disturbance reports we get, kids causing trouble out there. I'll secure it for you. Well, Vegas isn't short on gourmet dining, but still, those morsels are rare. I'll run a check on restaurants listing their specials online. Hmm. Only one hit for the past few days. Le Figaro restaurant, right downtown. This pad's perfect for nightmares, musty and damp. It's blood. This is where the EMTs picked up the body. It's pretty common to have bleeding from the mouth and an alcohol poisoning. No need to sample it. Yeah, in this town it's better to be lucky than smart, and we just got lucky. A fly must have dropped her eggs on the Vic's blood. We're getting closer to the time of death. Hey, we got some muddy footprints here. Ward Brown's first rule, it all comes down to shoe prints. Looks like fresh paint over here. You catch that pungent smell? Alcohol, maybe? Prince cut off at the break. Barely a partial. Part of a print, but it stops at the edge where the glass is broken. Even when you add up one plus one, we still come up a partial. Disruption and the dust could be important. This is kind of out of place, you think? Not as dusty as everything else. Blood, the wheelchair. Our Vic was wheeled over here and dumped. Damn, that's cold. Seat back looks really weathered. Well, this little number rolled a long way. Can't make out this number, but it's etched in the metal. Pretty superficial. Sometimes acid brings out more of the detail, but it might destroy the image altogether. Any ideas? Great idea. Microsil makes a good negative mold. We 
We're with the crime lab, and we need to speak with the manager. I'm the manager and owner, Marcus van der Helen. Is there a problem? There's no problem. We just have some questions. Background on an investigation. Always a pleasure to be of service to law enforcement. Oh my, numerous people. It's a house specialty. Not always on the menu, you understand. But patrons flock here for it, when it's available. You'll have to be much more specific. Would you mind keeping your voice down, officer? It's a terrible problem that I frankly can't seem to do anything about. I've called you people dozens of times, and while I know you can't be everywhere at once, these... these... tramps, bums, this human refuse, they frequent my alley in the dumpsters like a buffet line. This kind of thing, you understand, makes my patrons most uncomfortable. I'd rid the world of that filthy rabble if I could, much less my alley. These lowlifes are always lurking about back there, and as you might imagine, my relationship with any one of them is limited to chasing them the hell away. I wouldn't know one from the other. Interchangeable riffraff. We have an exclusive clientele, and as much as I would like to be of help, I must protect their privacy. No, I cannot do that. That's all we need right now. Well, it may be a fine restaurant, but this is one rank alley. It's got to be a better place for a guy down on his luck to find a meal. Truffle special and an asparagus omelet. Truffle special, grilled eggplant pasta. Truffle special with a baked Alaska dessert. Leftovers. Someone hungry enough might find this worth eating. Mm. Powdery substance. Torn cloth. Someone must have got snagged hopping the fence. That DNA is scanned and in the computer already. Amplified and graphed. Not the most fun I've had today. That was vomit, thank you very much. Delicately laced with asparagus and scrambled egg. Asparagus omelet, maybe? Traces of DNA from the lining of the digestive tract, faint but not something Greg Sanders is likely to miss, which I have amplified into full profile. Oh, and sometimes DNA traces like that in food could indicate stomach ulcer. I scan the shoe prints into the computer. The paint, which I put through a thin layer of chromatographic analysis, separating the organic compounds, is consistent with canned spray paint. A few different graffiti crews like to get creative with this stuff. Mostly water, but also alcohol. Vodka. Distinctive formulation, so we've got a brand. Leroy Banks Premium. I've seen that stuff. Six bucks a bottle. Definitely for the budget conscious. Shoe print scanned in the computer. Hey, I scanned that print into the computer for you.
Difasinone, a highly toxic rodenticide. Rat poison. But somebody sprinkled it on, wasn't mixed in. You mean someone's out to get homeless people? Nice, huh? The rat here is the one sprinkling on poison like it's seasoning. Warwick, these are human beings. People in trouble and some restaurant owner is going to just get rid of them like they're an infestation because they're bad for business? I hear you. This guy's starting to really rub me the wrong way. So we know somebody ordered that telltale asparagus omelet, only we don't know who. Garden Variety Restaurant Receipt. Truffles special on it, otherwise not that special. Garden Variety Restaurant Receipt. Truffles special on it, otherwise not that special. I've put that into the image enhancement and microscopy equipment for you. Nothing new to report on that. Microsil mold of an impression. Clever. Ran a few processes, enhanced it further, reversed it, and voila! Serial number SN21003. Denim fabric. Found blood on it. I've thermocycled it and dropped the chromosome map into the computer. Table scraps, but high-end ones. Kind you say you're bringing home to Poochie in the microwave for yourself. Time of death? 28 hours prior, give or take a few hours. Yesterday, around dinner time. Looks like you got a match. Pretty consistent with the size 11. Though prints from mud can be misleading. It's not a match. Not even similar. Something you want? Not that I could find. Fluid was lost from the victim, though. That could attract some blowflies anywhere the body has recently been. Difasinone? Manufacturers are required by law to incorporate an indicator dye to help identify it in the organs and bloodstream if the pesticide has been ingested. I found no traces of that or the poison itself in the body. However, there are ways to mask traces of poison, and this victim certainly shares many of the same characteristics that you'd find with a poisoning death.
Need something? The graffiti plus those tough tread bruiser prints? Yeah, I know those graffiti punks. Try the bloody core. You should go check their hangout. I'll check. Yeah, here it is. Gotta love the net. Sold at a public sale at a cancer clinic about a year ago. No name, though. You got it. That's a good, solid lead. Make our entrepreneur pal look it up for you. That's all I have to share right now. Reluctantly, I will honor your warrant and pray that you will remain discreet. What's up? With the credit card info, you should be able to track the person's identity on the computer. I've set up a search for you. Got a hit. J.J. Thomas. Address and everything. Please come in. May I help you? Who with the crime lab? Would you mind answering a few questions? Yes, it is. It's the home of J.J. Thomas. And I'm Claire Thomas, his daughter. If you're here to see my father, I'm afraid he... passed away recently. We're sorry for your loss, Miss Thomas. What's this about, officers? It's just a routine matter, but we could use your input. Certainly. Bravely. He'd been fighting a long battle with lung cancer, and that's a war you just can't win. I... I hope I can help you, but I'm not really at my best at the moment. I, I was close to my father. I'm an only child, and, and my mother died when I was five. Daddy was really all the family I had, and, and now I'm... I'm just sorting through things, putting a lifetime into boxes. I'm a little confused and just barely keeping it together. So, if we could make this short, I'd be grateful. No problem. We just have a few questions. Yes, while I settle the estate. This was my father's winter residence. The rainy weather in Seattle was hard on him. Last year, when he got worse, he moved here permanently, and I stayed in Seattle. I understand that you're just doing your job, but I'm afraid as vague as you've been, I can't see cooperating to that extent. Not when I'm under this kind of pressure. Maybe later, if you can make the reasons for this intrusion a little more clear. That's all we need right now. From time to time. I'm his executor and sole heir, and I'm clear to put charges on the corporate card. Why, yes I did. Just the other night, actually. Now this is embarrassing. Well, I guess you won't be surprised if I say I've been an emotional train wreck since Daddy died, and... And frankly, I've been lonely as hell. And I met a man at the casino lounge the other day. We had a nice conversation, and it seemed like there was this little spark between us, only... Well, let's just say nothing ignited. 
kind of came to my senses, and we did share a meal, but not phone numbers. Well, that's an odd question. I'll have to think. Um, I had an asparagus omelet, which is a favorite of mine. Really, I, I don't remember exactly what my um, friend had. <laughs> Frankly, he was nice enough, but awfully bland. Miss Thomas, certainly. Lovely young woman. She's the daughter of the late J.J. Thomas. Very distinguished industrialist. Ordered her favorite, asparagus omelette. She was dining with a slender man, about five foot ten, five foot eleven, I'd say. Perhaps around forty, thirty-five years of age. He behaved himself, but he seemed out of place, frankly. Ill at ease. An odd choice for a dining companion for the likes of Miss Thomas. That's all we need right now. I was honored to know him personally. He was much more than just a regular patron to me. A generous man, with a warmth that not all wealthy people, if I might be frank, display. J.J. even sometimes had me at his condo, where we spoke of the arts and politics and business over martinis into the wee hours. He was a friend. I miss him dearly. Wow, and I thought Sanders' crib was a mess. Blank. Could be useful anyway. Damn, it's just a partial. It's a bad habit, but good evidence. Yes? Prints in the computer for you. You're welcome. And we have a match. Same exact paint batch as that stuff swabbed at the Laughing Academy. Tiny traces of mitochondrial DNA. I was able to amplify it enough for a profile. Waiting for you in the computer. Track, sit down and see how vicious he is.
Electrostatic imprint lifter shows us what was on the previous page. Handwritten, pawn shop, Ogden, and fourth. Open 24 hours, except when we arrive. Typical. This looks like the paper we analyzed. Same handwriting, same address. What's up? We've got some mitochondrial DNA from the smoker's mouth. I got a feeling this butt is bad for somebody's health. That's the same guy as in the hangout. Probably waiting for the pawn shop to open. We should be around now. A ring. Pretty grimy. This could be a family crest. Well, this one's definitely not fresh off the rack. Whitish brown and different from human hair. That's not right for this. What are you looking at? Joe Nobody, what's yours? Work Brown, Crime Lab. You willing to answer a few questions? Not unless you got a good reason to. So what if I am? Member? Do I look like a member of anything? What if I did? It's junk. Eh, it's a piece of crap. I was done with it and I threw it away. <laughs> Wear it yourself means so much to you. Hey. One of the things we look at on human hair is the medullary index, the ratio of the diameter of the medulla to the shaft. But the index on the one you found is quite high, suggesting a different animal. Judging by the scale pattern, I'd guess a cute little kitty. You might be able to determine the species by comparing it under the microscope to known samples. Pretty fancy meal for somebody to upchuck on such a scroungy jacket. The ever-popular asparagus omelet? Brie cheese. Light on the DNA, though. Not enough to amplify for the computer. Found a gold ring under the gunk and grime. This crest on it would have made it hard to pawn. Pretty small, size 5. Can't think of much more to tell you about that. Singapore. It's a rare breed. Is that a rich guy's pet?
Something you want? Based on my measurements, it looks like a size 5. This guy? Measured him at 5'9 and some change. I don't have anything else to say. Yes, he did. You do come up with things, officers. She's around here, somewhere. What's up? She ate the omelet, and her cat's hair is on the jacket. So let's see if she's hiding anything else. Some routine matter? Look, I've been honest with you. All right, go on, go ahead. But make it quick, and please don't disrupt the things I'm sorting. There's so much work here with the estate. That's all we need right now. Wakeman Vodka. That's the victim's brand. Now, here's something Gris would love. Blowfly larva. Body fluids could have been cleaned up, but not before this little guy got himself out of the way. Little fella might be our new best friend. It's a burned document, a report or something. Yes. That's ready for image enhancement microscopy. Couldn't restore the whole deal, but I did stabilize some of the burned paper enough to tell this is, or was, a private investigator's report, commissioned by the late J.J. Thomas himself. Trying to locate someone, it seems. Couldn't make out the name of the investigating firm, though. Even I'm not perfect. It's pretty mangled, so there's no point popping it under the microscope. But here's the good news. We tried a new technique for analyzing blowfly contents, and guess what we found? DNA. Tie. Well, that's familiar. Remember the crest on the ring we found? Same cat. It's not a match. Not even similar. Looks like our homeless victim dropped by the Thomas condo recently. Interesting.
Need something? Vanda Helen's food was in the victim's stomach, and he's got a real thing about the riffraff in his alley. Okay, so we couldn't actually find poison in the victim's system, but still, he's got an axe to grind. Let's bring in Mr. Warmth. On occasion, as the manager, I from time to time take the garbage out. I'm not sure I'd say often. It's my property. Is taking security precautions a crime in this country now? What control do I have over what happens behind my restaurant when I'm not present? If some scavenger ate something he shouldn't and met an unfortunate end accordingly, well, what fault is that of mine? I have my free will, and he has had his. That's all I have to share right now. All restaurants, even the finest, and ours is certainly one, have problems with vermin. And you had your problems, right? With infestation? Namely homeless guys trying to find a crust of bread, scrap of meat. So you sprinkled rat poison all over your garbage like you were seasoning a stew. And our homeless came sniffing, and your generosity met his hunger and contributed to the man's death. Look, even if I admitted to doing what you said, which keep in mind I haven't, there's no way I'd use enough poison to kill somebody. Just a light sprinkle here and there to keep the vermin away. That's all. Well, you could bet we'll be in touch if any other homeless come in with as much as a stomach ache. Oh, and you're still on our suspect list. Why not? I'm not guilty of a thing except trying to run a spick and span establishment. I have no objection. Glad to cooperate. I'm a respectable citizen and you're wrong about me. Claire Thomas spent time with our victim right around the time he was killed, and she had her dead father's wheelchair to cart a corpse around. This case is sounding solid. Let's invite her to our party. Abandoned what? Uh, I don't think so. You people are completely out of your minds, though, so I can see how an insane asylum might fit in. I have no idea. He hasn't needed it much since his death. The hospital must have it. Check with them if it's important for some stupid reason. I would imagine I don't have much choice. Why not? If it'll help clear up this ridiculous matter. That's all we need right now. That DNA's been amplified and graphed, it's in the computer. That print has been scanned into the computer for you. I amplified and graphed that DNA of yours, scanned it into the computer. Hey, I scanned that print into the computer for you. not Vander Helen's prints on the wheelchair.
Claire handled that wheelchair all right. Not quite a match. Make sure you look very closely for subtle details between them. Interpreting evidence isn't guesswork, you know. Looks like that's not the restaurant owner's cookies tossed on the carpet. He must not be our guy. Blair Thomas, our indignant suspect. I don't keep track of petty details. I'll have to check my day planner. You were at the asylum. It's where you and your graffiti pals practice your art. You threw that ring away because they asked you too many questions about it at the pawn shop. Or maybe you saw the cops in the neighborhood. Oh, and I think maybe you killed a man. Go to hell. I didn't kill anybody. I found an old jacket. I found a crummy ring. So sue me. You found them, all right. You found them on the man you killed. Screw you! Hey, look! Back off! I, I've been in the slammer, okay? And I just went back to the old hang. Only nobody was around, and... Well, there was this dude. I, I thought he was sleeping at first. He was all sprawled out, looking weird. He looked, uh... looked dead. And damn... He was dead. So what the hell? Help myself to some stuff? Sure that was cold, but life is cold. And dude didn't look like he needed a jacket anymore. Or a ring, huh? Now I'll tell you how I see it going down. You went back to your old hangout, all right. But your old buds weren't around. Just a homeless guy, minding his business. Only you needed a jacket, and you saw that ring. Held him down, poured that stuff down his throat, killing him. And then, like you said, you helped yourself. No way, man. No freaking way. Look, I'm no prize, but I don't kill guys for anything, let alone some scuzzy jacket and tarnished old ring or, or whatever. I told you, in stir. Prison? Yeah, we'll check into that. That's it. That's all I got for you. What's up? That's an easy one. Now that is an alibi. He was inside, all right. He may not be our favorite human, but he's also not our man. Yeah, let's see if your suspect has anything else to tell us. That's all I have to share right now. Sure, let's get your suspect back in here. Lying? Why would I lie to you? All I did was have dinner with a guy who turns out to have been homeless. He wasn't dressed like a homeless man when he struck up a conversation with me in that lounge. I'm sure he wasn't dressed in a street person attire when you dined together. But you made sure he was back in his rags when the time came. I already told you. Nothing happened between us. How did that asylum go out of business with customers like you waiting to get in? Hey, roll out all the attitude you want, lady. You were in that asylum. Your fingerprints are on that wheelchair. Your father's wheelchair, which you used to dump the body. 
What a stunning piece of evidence. My fingerprints were on my father's wheelchair? However could they have gotten there? Well then, why don't you tell me how your DNA got on the victim's clothes? He was in your father's condo, Claire, shortly after you were having dinner with him. Right before his death. I don't buy your love connection. What's the real story? You're reaching. You don't have anything. You don't know a damn thing. Who is he, Claire? Or who was he? Or should I ask, why was your father so intent to find some homeless nobody? A nobody with your family crest on his ring. Why don't you come back when you've got your own theory? All right, all right, all right. My father? I gave my life to him, living the way he wanted me to, going to the schools he chose, taking the courses he picked, working for him, living with him, never marrying. And suddenly, when he's sick, he starts talking about a son, my half-brother, by his first wife. First I ever heard of it, and my father gets all misty-eyed and regretful. Oh, poor child ran off and quit college, disappeared after he and my father had bitter words of some kind. And my father? He wrote the boy off. Kid was dead, far as my father was concerned. That is, until my father lay dying and gets all syrupy sentimental. To find his son before he died and hired an investigator who found him right here in Vegas. Street rabble. Only by the time my brother turned up, Papa was already dead. I decided to meet him. Size him up? Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. We could run the company together and... Well, only when I saw him, he was this vile, foul-smelling bum. Still, he was no fraud. He was family, all right. That ring with your crest? He'd held on to it, no matter how much he might have been tempted to trade it in for a meal or a bottle. He was as sentimental as my father, I guess. Anyway, I cleaned him up before we went out, bought him a nice meal. And I told him I'd even see that he was given a fair settlement, and we'd even see about a position of some kind with the company. But oh no, straight from the gutter to greed personified. He was going to fight me for the inheritance, as the firstborn son. He... he shouldn't have done that. I was the chosen one, or... or I had been. He... he fell asleep on the couch. He'd had a lot to drink for him. I got on top of him. He was half asleep. But when he woke up, I kept him pinned, and I shoved that vodka down his greedy throat. He almost drowned on it, but I didn't let up. I didn't let up. Then he was dead, and so I got the new clothes off him and his awful clothes put back on. And that was when it hit me. What I'd done, what I'd... I'd... I'd stooped to. And that expensive meal came up, and it was horrible. But I got my act together, and I wheeled him out to the van, over to the asylum, and I just... just dumped him like the homeless parasite he was. What did he ever amount to anyway? I'm afraid I have an unpleasant little piece of family history I need to share. We tested your DNA, Claire. And we compared it to your so-called half-brother. What do you mean, so-called? No chromosomal match. I spoke to your family attorney, who off the record shared a story with me. About your father's first wife and a chauffeur. Your father apparently disinherited your half-brother after discovering the boy wasn't his own. Then your father had regrets on his deathbed. Blood or no blood, this was the son he'd raised into manhood. Still, if you hadn't killed the chauffeur's son, Claire, you would have inherited everything. And you wouldn't be going to a cement condo. You know, seems every family has a black sheep. Sometimes it's a surprise who that black sheep turns out to be.
uh, in the novels in particular, I get inside the story in a way that TV doesn't because it's exterior. The game is, of all the things I've written on CSI, the game is the most like writing the show. And I have to say, it's extremely gratifying. The biggest thrill for me in doing these, these video games is as the sort of road show CSI guy, the guy who does the novels and does the comic books and does the licensing work, I don't get to hear these actors speak, speak my lines. I hear them in my head, uh, as many crazy people do. But this game gave me the opportunity, these two games have given me the opportunity to hear William Peterson, Mark Helgenberger, uh, you know, speak my lines. And, and I have such great respect for this cast, it's, it gives me a, a, a really big charge. From my perspective, and admittedly it's my perspective, it would be better to, to inject the gaming elements into a real story than to try to inject story elements into the game. It's always a bit of a compromise. And I, there, there's, no way, there's no way around that. It's difficult for something to be two things at once. And so, uh, you know, I think it's one of the remarkable things about this game is, is that it, it can do two things at once. It can be, I hope, on, on some level a satisfying story and on, on another level uh, that gaming experience that is the primary reason people come to, uh, you know, to CSI, the video game.